Well, Dunedin risks becoming a slum city. That is the quote from Dave Cull, the mayor. Uh, what's happened here is effectively MBIE has gone into a few flats, uh, student flats on Castle Street. They've found a few of them, I think it's about half a dozen or so, haven't come up to scratch whatsoever. Uh, so the slum city call has come out from the mayor. Uh, he's himself a uh, flat owner. Um, and uh, by all accounts does a reasonable job of their upkeep as well. So uh, the issue here is we've probably got a few rogue elements uh, to deal with. Lisa Scott, what do you reckon about the uh, scummy nature, the slum nature, well, supposedly, of I North do, Dunedin? I do wonder, Don, whether a lot of this has much to do with the fact that at this time of the year, the whole North End is a bit of a ghetto of squalor. I mm. mean, the paint started peeling, the gardens are full of cans, and there's not a first year who doesn't want their, f their first flatting experience in Dunedin to involve a bit of gastro, maybe some nits, you know, I'm <laughs> living in a horrible place. Throwing it's all a bit part of, of it. It's all, well. yeah, pneumonia. It's yeah. the student hovel vibe. Yeah, it's the culture. Yeah, but yeah. I was thinking, thank God, MB didn't go to South Dunedin. Yeah, well, that's an interesting point, which we'll come to in just a minute. But um, uh, Dave Carl has said that, uh, we've got a, a graphic, I think, of this particular quote. He says that uh, the landlords that they've picked up in North Dunedin, frankly, are letting the city down. He says it's very easy for us to get a reputation for being a slum city uh, if we have landlords that won't live up to their obligation. So what they've also done is they've come in and uh, there are some new sort of regulations that have to be upheld. Um, but do you think, though, it's probably just a few rogue oh, elements I think, here? And mostly absentee. I mean, I think most of those flats are in great condition. And from what you read often, the students can pick and choose. They don't have to live in the really scummy ones. They really enjoy it. Dave Cull also says that, as I've said in the past, it's against the law to sell food that makes people sick. I don't see why it should be legal to rent accommodation that makes people sick maybe stretching it just a little bit there in terms mm. of the analogy. Um, look, some of these properties are so, so old. Well, no, I mean, there's no getting away from the fact that Dunedin does have some very old housing stock. And I mean, some of it is no good for anything but a blade. And I don't think it's stretching it to say some of it makes people sick. Kids do oh, get yeah. really sick, especially in South D. Cold flats, people have got the flu all the time. It's no good. Yeah, and um, so which comes on to the, the next point, and Dave Carl, he'll back you up on this point, uh, Lisa Scott. He says, uh, I hope that uh, MBIE extend its attention to other areas of town like South Dunedin. We know that some of the rental housing is not up to scratch. Uh, the thing is, though, it's cheap uh, housing mm. a, a lot of the time. Yeah. So what that means, of course, is that um, if I'm a landlord, why would I sink 100k into a place where I'm not actually going to exactly. make that much off? And if you're a renter and that's all you can afford, you've got few choices for affordable housing. Mm. That's right. So maybe the rules, the regulations need to be yeah, stepped up across the board. I mean, it's fine to focus on the worst case scenario, which I'm sure would agree would be North Dunedin. Mm. I mean, it's uh, legendary, it's iconic, isn't it? But yeah. extending it wouldn't be a, a bad thing.